We're back, everyone. Okay, let's say that we've determined we do have celiac disease. We're going to talk now about what we can do to treat it. Richard, what's the first thing a person should do? Well, you need to become aware, you know, of all the foods that uh, uh, contain the gluten. And perhaps the absolute first thing we have to do is accept the fact that we have this condition. You know, it, it is a big adjustment in your life. And I think the first thing we have to do is accept that disease. You've got to read labels very carefully. The response, your improvement, may take several months. You know, there's a lot of variables in this condition. And, and if uh, damage has been done to your body, you know it takes time to heal. So uh, I would say most people would see some improvement in 30 days of a gluten-free diet, but it can take a year. Don't become discouraged. That's why it's a good idea to have the test. You know, the, de mm -hmm. the tests conclusively show I have this condition. That means at six months, if I'm not doing as well as I think I should, well, that's all right. I just need to keep going with this plan. It's real important. It's the psychology of this thing. Mm -hmm. You know, avoiding grain, think about it for a minute. No bread, no hamburger buns, a lot of things that you're not thinking, noodles, spaghetti, all these things are done. You're out. No more. Until... We have the new products come in that we want to talk about, the gluten-free products, the replacement products that have really helped this uh, gluten sensitivity patients. There are now over 2,000 gluten-free foods available for all y'all with, with gluten sensitivity. What a relief for you. And as we saw in the news today, the FDA is trying to standardize these products so you know reliably safe gluten-free mm -hmm. foods. And I think that's a good thing. Uh, this market has really grown. The USDA states by 2010, it'll be a $1.7 billion a year market, this gluten-free foods. And that's good because there are 3 million of you out there needing these foods. But, Cindy, there's a list of foods that you have to watch yes, real closely really that may do. have hidden gluten. Well, Let's you know, if you find that, that you that you have celiac disease or really yeah. any food allergy. I, I just think of it as a food allergy that way it's easy just to comprehend. Yeah. You have to read your labels carefully. You just, that just becomes a way of life and that's fine. And you'll find sections in the store now that will advertise and will tell you that it's gluten free. Even if it says that, if I were you, I'd still read that label and read it twice because they can be hidden. Here's a list. Some of your canned soups, prepared gravies and sauces, will have a gluten type product. You see, they use that as a thickener. So you wouldn't think of it as being in soup, but a lot of times it is. Luncheon meats and canned meats. Did yeah, you know and those that's could something, have gluten? Who would have thought there'd be yeah. gluten in that? But yeah, yeah they, they do. Salad dressings. Uh -huh. Salad uh -huh. dressings will have it in it. Instant coffee. Who would have thought you'd find gluten in instant coffee, but you do. That's, again, it's an excipient. They use it as a filler to keep the coffee from sticking together in the jar. So, yeah. and you know, it's just one of those things, hard candies candy bars, yogurt, and would yeah. you believe these two, ketchup and mustard? Really? Ketchup See, and I mustard. prefer the mustard because it's calorie and sugar free, but there's right. gluten in there. If, if I were gluten sensitive, that'd be a problem. Huh? So really, Richard, it depends too then on the severity of your disease. Yes, and the brand of these products And the brand, too. right. Yeah. But you'll learn which ones that you can use and you'll just get in the habit of taking your own food. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. You just prepare your own foods when you go to dinner, it's not a big deal. And there are some uh, ingredients that you may never suspect. It's hard to identify. Unidentified starch. You know, they'll just say in the list of ingredients, starch or modified food starch. That may contain gluten. Hydrolyzed vegetable or plant protein. Yeah, that's a, that's a grain protein. It could mm -hmm. be gluten in there. Binders, stabilizers, emulsifiers, fillers, excipients, extenders, and don't forget malt. Malt. That's beer. See? Beer and malted milks, you know, mm -hmm. the shakes. They may all have gluten. But see? you know, Richard, I'm seeing a move in the food industry, and I, I'm really proud of them, and I'm glad they're doing this, because you'll see on the back of a lot of the main products that you see in the store, and they'll say contains, it'll say allergy information, may contain, and then it will give a list. Yes. It'll say wheat, soy, yes. dairy, but yes. it will list your more common food allergens in that little spot. Again, wheat, barley, rye, and some people are sensitive to the low level in oats. Right. Oats is the lowest, right. and some people who are very sensitive can't even have the oats. So if it lists those in the ingredients, yes. let's you probably not away. eat that food. Better stay away. Living with celiac disease, first step is accept it. Learn to live with it, work with it. Don't work against it, work with it. The most common reason for failure to progress in celiac is non-compliance with the gluten-free diet. Number one reason. 
Knowledge is power. Your libraries, your health food stores, the internet, support groups. There are even magazines now dedicated solely to the celiac patient. I, I see them at the health food that's store. Right. That's yeah. right. And they have recipes in recipes, them? Recipes, it's wonderful. Mm -hmm. You know, one of our favorite Water brands resources. for... Uh, uh, products is it's the Bob's Red Mill. They have a rice flour that's gluten free. See rice? You're free on uh, gluten free with with mm -hmm. rice. And it substitutes for a flour you can make pancakes and all kinds of things with the rice flour. See you can learn to work with it. You can have your favorite foods they're just going to be a little different. Right. And that's okay because we're feeling good. That's right. Now if we don't have this available right now we will after the coming break. We have two websites that we're going to put up on the screen here, uh, celiac.com and glutenfree.com. If you suspect you have gluten sensitivity, the first thing I would do is buy this program, a copy of it, and review it several times to get the details so you have a feeling for it. Then I would go to celiac.com and glutenfree.com and read and learn. And you know, this is how American medicine is evolving, folks. We all complain of the cost of, of uh, health care in America. Yeah. I don't like it either. But the bottom line is we're going to have to get more involved in our individual care. We're going to have to get to learn more about We're going to have to be able to handle more of our things. And it's going to take some good judgment because there are certain situations you need to leave entirely with the doctor. Absolutely. They're, they're very tough things to manage. But you'd be surprised how rare that really is. You know, so many of our health conditions are really just in our lap, and we're capable of dealing with so much of this, and gluten sensitivity is one of those. Mm -hmm. Diabetes comes to mind. There's so many conditions that we can do more for ourselves, and a good place to start is those two websites. Okay. Well, Cindy, I, it's about break time. Do you think we would have the time to talk to at least one of well, our let's viewers? Do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, folks, let's do that. We'll be back after these important messages. <laughs> 